Hi, I am Selva. So in this one, we will try to understand how to do outlier detection using Z-scores. Previously, we have seen what outliers are and how to detect those outliers using box plots and IQR scores. Now in this one, we will use a different approach called the Z-score based approach to find what those outliers are. Then we will also see how to treat those outliers using various methods. Now, what are Z-scores? Say you have a data set. You have a data set. Right? It has various numeric as well as categorical columns. If you have numeric columns, you can compute the Z scores of those numeric columns. For example, you have a data set. Say this column represents credit score. Credit score. You have other data also. It can, you have age, salaries, all these data could be present. But we compute the Z score of a column by considering one column at a time. So we have this data for credit score. We take this data. From this, you compute both the mean of this column as well as the standard deviation of this column. Once you have the mean and the standard deviation, by the way, how do you compute mean? You, you sum up all these values and divide it by the total number of observations. That is nothing but the mean. Standard deviation also has its own formula. So you compute the mean and the standard deviation of this column. Suppose this column contains values from say i equal to 1 all the way to i equal to n. It contains n, n different rows. Now for each of the data points in this column, from each of the data points, from xi, from each of the xi, you subtract the mean and divide it by the standard deviation. All right. For each of these data points, you do this transformation and store it in a new column here. We will call this as credit score, credit score underscore z. All right. So you will have a transformed column by applying this transformation. You computed the mean standard deviation. From each, of the, from each of the values, subtract the mean divided by the standard deviation, you have this data, new data column you have created. Now typically, what happens is the scale, the range of values for the new column will have a mean of 0, All right, the mean will be 0 and the standard deviation will be 1 because we are doing this transformation. From every column, every data point you subtract the mean, the mean will become 0. Mean of this data will become 0 and standard deviation will, will become 1. And the range will go anywhere between around the range of minus 3 to plus 3, typically. Typically, it can be slightly more than that also, all right. So we have computed the z-score of this. The fundamental idea is outliers are those data points in this new transformed column, those data points that are farther away from 0, those data points are typically referred to as outliers. Typically, what, what that means is any value that is to the extremes that is more than less than minus 3 or more than plus 3 the z score values right less than minus 3 less than minus 3 or more than plus 3 those values typically are considered as outliers but why is this so in order to understand the purpose and the logic behind it it will be good to have an understanding of what a normal distribution is and what a standard normal distribution is so a normal distribution typically follows a bell-shaped curve that looks like this. All right? Most of the commonly occurring phenomena and data follows tend to follow a normal distribution. For example, heights of people, age of people, blood pressure, income levels, these kind of naturally occurring data tend to follow a normal distribution. All right? And its shape looks something like this. Now, for a normal distribution, for a normal distribution, it typically has it can you can define it using two parameters: the mean the mean of the standard deviation of the normal distribution and the standard deviation of the normal distribution. Using these two parameters alone, you can define the shape of the distribution, now normal distribution, all right? Now, while that is normal distribution, you also have something called as the standard, standard normal distribution. For this, we do the same transformation what we did. So from each of the data points xi, we subtract the mean and divide it by the standard deviation. By doing this, the mean becomes the mean becomes 0 and the standard deviation of the entire data set becomes 1. This is standard deviation. All right? The mean becomes 0 and standard deviation becomes 1. Now after this transformation, so here you have 0 here and 0 plus 1 standard deviation. So this is 1 sigma, this is 2 sigma. This is 3 sigma, all right, likewise, minus 1 sigma, minus 2 sigma, minus 3 sigma. A property of this standard normal distribution is 
you can see here about 68 percentage of the data points lie between this range that is mu minus sigma 1 sigma that is between minus 1 sigma to plus 1 sigma you have 68 percentage of the observations likewise between minus 2 sigma to plus 2 sigma you have 95 percentage of the data points here okay, 95 percentage of the data points likewise for 3 sigma for 3 sigma it covers 99.7 percentage of the data points so typically what have what are outliers those those data points that are extreme are considered as outliers. So any point that lies beyond this, this region, you typically consider them as outliers. Alright, so this is the region of our interest to find out what outliers are. You might be okay, it might be okay, like if you want to relax the conditions of what you classify as an outlier, you might want to change it to, say if, if you want to consider 5% of your data points as outliers, you might want to consider the range to be going from minus 2 sigma to plus 2 sigma. But this is not the general case. We go for minus 3 sigma to plus 3 sigma generally, all right. So that's how we detect it. Now how to treat those outliers? First we will do the Python code of how to do this and then we will go back to go to treating the outliers using three different methods. Now as usual we will, okay, so if you have not been following along from the previous videos, you might want to run this piece of code. This is basically importing the libraries. This part will not be needed. This part will not be needed. All right. So we import the libraries and then we import the data set also. So churn modeling underscore m dot csv. This is the data set. On this data set, we are going to apply the z score method to compute the outliers for credit score column. Now, the data itself looks something like this. The raw credit score column. If you make a histogram, it looks something like this. Let's first compute the z-score for this particular column. To do that, we need the standard deviation, the standard deviation, the mean. We are finding if there are any infinite values. No, nothing is present. All right. So we are noting down the mean and the standard deviation of credit score, and these are the values. Yeah. Once you have that, we can cal zooming it in a bit. So we can calculate the z-score as df dot credit score minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. We are storing this under z score underscore credit score data. So now you see the original scale of the data was around 600, 700, 800 and all. Now the new transformed data, the data goes from say minus 3 to plus 3 or slightly lesser than or more than this for outlier data points. All right. So we have the transformed data. To get the extreme values, we get those data points that are either less than 3, less than minus 3 or greater than 3. So these are those rows. These are those rows where the credit score is, okay, all of them are, all of these rows are very le lesser end of the spectrum, right? So these are the credit scores, which has a Z score lesser than minus three. So this part is the, is the criterion that got satisfied. And these are the outlier data points as per this rule. Okay, now we have extracted the outliers. Now, the decision of whether you want to treat them or not is different. We typically will not be treating these these outliers. So for credit score, we know that these are outliers. These are extreme values, may, may not be outliers. But the decision of treating or not, I will typically leave this alone and proceed with the next step. But for the sake of demonstration, suppose if these values were say 2.0, which is not possible, the value of credit score may not be, will not be lesser than, typically in this case, it's not going to be lesser than 350. All right. Suppose there were, there were values much smaller than that. It's probably an error and you might want to simply replace it with the value 350 itself. All right. So we are not, so that is the logical and the correct way of doing it. But suppose you want to treat it, right? How do you, what are the different methods you can go about to treat the outliers? All right. So one option you have is to simply remove those observations from the data. All right. So that is one way of handling the outlier, not exactly treating it. The other method is quantile based capping. For example, those values that are lesser than minus 3, you can cap them with 99th percentile or 99.7th percentile, 99.7th percentile value, which is the Z score corresponding to minus 3. You can take that value and replace it for all those values lesser than minus 3. Same applies for any value greater than plus 3 Z score. You can replace it with a Z score of plus 3. All right. So that is one other method of treating it or you can simply treat it with 
replace those values with 99th percentile or 99.7th percentile whatever whatever way you want to go about it this is a bit of a subjective decision which you want to take a best call on so that is one way of doing it a third and more popular or a more reasonable way of doing it is to treat those outliers as missing values so simply replace those outliers with nan values and then use the method such as the my imputation this is an approach where you can predict the missing values using machine learning based methods so you can use such methods to predict the values of the missing observations which originally were outliers in the data so typically these are the different methods you can use the most popular one that people normally use is first option is to identify what would be the appropriate value and replace it so that is the best option to go about it alternately you might want to go for quantile based capping the third op the third option is treat it as a missing value and take it forward all right so that's those are the options now here we are removing those outliers we are not including these data points so we are including only the data points that are greater than minus 3 z score or lesser than 3 z score so here we are just extracting these data points and going to do quantile based capping so find out the values of here in this case this is we have computed the 10th percentile and 90th percentile ideally this is this should be 1th percentile and 99th percentile if you consider only like two percentage of your data points as outliers you can go for 1th percentile and 99th percentile as the lower and the upper cutoffs and deploy and replace those extreme values with the corresponding data all right so that's what we are doing here so we are computing so here we are going for 10 and 90 but you can you can choose what you want to set here once you do that you can do the outlier capping and this is the step where that happens so here we are finding out the positions which qualify for this criteria lower than the lower cap or so this is lower than the lower cap and replacing it with a new column values then finally we have the other approach if you want to see how to do this approach where you want to treat the outliers as missing values i have i will leave a link in the description below use that link and see how to do mice imputation on missing data so that's how we do outlier treatment and outlier detection and treatment using z scores in the next one we will see a more robust more innovative approach of finding multivariate outliers using the mahalanobis distance based approach